Lesson 3.6, the least squares regression line. When we make a regression line, we're trying to get the best line to make predictions from a scatter plot. We want to minimize the residuals so that the predicted values are as close as possible to the actual values. So when we make a regression line, we're using a method called the least squares regression line. And this is the line that makes the sum of the squared residuals as small as possible. So here we have our scatter plot of miles driven versus price for these Ford F-150s. The residuals are the vertical distances from each actual point to the point that's predicted by the line of best fit. Okay? Or in other words, just the vertical distance from the point to that line of best fit. Some of these residuals are positive. These are the ones that are above the line of best fit. And other ones are negative, the ones below the line of best fit. If we were just to add these together, they would largely cancel each other out, and we get a sum right around zero. So in order to add them, we're going to do the same thing that we did when we found the standard deviation, and we're going to square them first. Okay, The least squared regression line is going to be the line that makes the sum of those squared residuals the smallest it can possibly be. In this scatter plot, we have information on 23 children. Our explanatory variable is the age that these children spoke their first word. And we want to see if that's predictive of their eventual Gessel adaptive score, which is taken later in life. All those purple points there indicate one child. Those two red ones note that there are two children represented by those red dots. Child 18 and child 19 are both outliers in the sense that they don't fit the overall pattern. All right, and we're asking, uh, uh, we're being asked how those two children affect the least squares regression line. We'll start with child 18, which is down in the bottom right there. And this point is far away from the other points horizontally. And that gives it what's called leverage, right? It's an influential point with high leverage because it's so far away horizontally. It's going to pull that line of best fit towards it, and it pulls it either straight up or straight down, depending on whether it's above or below it. Okay, so imagine that green line is kind of like a seesaw. Maybe without that line of best fit, uh, it's a little flatter, not quite as steep. All right, and it's pulling that line towards it, which is going to make the line steeper. As for the actual correlation, all right, that's going to increase the correlation, uh, increase the y-intercept, and make that line steeper. We can see that graphically here. The green line is the line with all 19 points, all right, and if we remove child 18, it snaps up to this blue line. So we can see without that child, it's less steep, it's a little flatter. So that is pulling, that point is pulling the line of best fit towards it. All right, in addition, if we look at the correlations, the correlation with that point is higher than without it. All right? And it's because it has high leverage. It's an influential point pulling the line of best fit towards it. And this point ends up close to that line of best fit. As for child 19, again, it's an outlier. It doesn't fit the overall pattern. But in this case, it doesn't have high leverage because it's not far away horizontally. And it's, stand, uh, it's pretty much right in the middle of all those points. Okay, so it's near the mean of those X's, right? But it is above it. So it's going to pull the line up a bit, right? Which will increase that Y intercept, but won't change the slope very much. And again, we'll see that here. So the difference with and without child 19, it's almost negligible, right? Correlation with and without it, right? With this point, it's less strong than without it. Removing this point is going to make the collection of points closer to that line of best fit. Now, we've been talking a lot about least square regression lines and line of best fits, and we defined what least squares mean, but what does the word regression mean? So when we're talking about regression to the mean, it's the tendency of points to revert to an average, to move back towards an average. To illustrate that, we have the scatter plot showing the heights of fathers and the heights of their sons, and we have some lines breaking this into parts where we have tall fathers on the right, short fathers on the left, and these are the average size fathers. This red line is indicating situations where the son and the father are exactly the same height. 
In situations where the son is taller than the father, their point would be above the line. They would have a positive residual. And if they're shorter than the father, those points would be below the line with a negative residual. If we look at the points overall, it's fair to say that there's about a 50% chance of sons being taller than their fathers because there's about half the points above that line of best fit and half below. However, if we start looking at bisections and we look at just the tall fathers, we can see that that's not the case. Most of the sons of tall fathers end up shorter than their father. And conversely, when we look at the short fathers, we see that most of the sons in that situation are taller than their fathers. These are both displaying a regression to the mean, the tendency for values to revert to the average, in this case, the average height, which would just be a flat line across all those points. And if we look at this graph with both the y equals x line drawn and the least squares regression line in blue there, we see that regression towards the mean. And the fact that sons of tall fathers are typically not as tall in most cases as their father was. Same thing with short fathers, they're typically not as short. And we're seeing a movement, a tendency to move towards an average height. So to close things out, let's look at a similar scatter plot, which displays the winning percentages for NBA teams, both before an all-star break and after an all-star break. Again, we have the line Y equals X drawn on that graph there, indicating that that winning percentage would be the same both before and after the break. So the first question of the six teams that won fewer than 40% of their games, that's referring to this section over here. What percentage did better after the all-star break? Anybody above the line of best, best fit did better. So six out of six teams improved after being that low percentage before the all-star break. Part B is asking the same question, but this time it's focusing on those teams that won more than 60% of the games, the teams in this section over here. What percentage did better after the break? All of these points are under the line of best fit in this case, indicating that they did worse. So eight out of eight did worse. All of these teams are moving towards the average, right? Moving towards that 50%.